Today's Cowboys report is made possible by Manscaped, the makers of the all-new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. I'll tell you all about them later on in today's show, but we are previewing a pivotal NFC and NFC East matchup. Cowboys, Eagles, a fantastic rivalry. If you want the Cowboys to beat the Eagles this week, then we need your help. We have all of the data over the years to prove it. The more likes, the more likely it is the Cowboys win. So do not be the one who jinxes the Cowboys into a loss. Like the video right now. This is truly a national game. It's not a primetime football game, but outside of the Vegas and New York markets, uh, this game's being showed everywhere on TV. It is, it is a nationally televised game, basically. And the Eagles at home, I would say correctly so, because they are 7-1, and one, and they are the home team, are a three-point favorite. Now, their defense has not been as good this year, and at times the offense has been up and down, which you could say the exact same thing about the Cowboys' offense, up and down. Both teams, I think, feeling pretty good right now. Eagles had the big one over the Dolphins, snuck by... Held on against the Commanders. Cowboys offense looks back the past two weeks. We'll break down the full preview, keys to victory, but first, injury news. Tyron Smith, as expected, did not practice on Wednesday. That is not a huge surprise. Mike McCarthy said that was going to be the case. What matters is Thursday. Will he be able to go with that next stinger issue? The Cowboys claimed, oh, it was a last-minute scratch. If he doesn't play this week, it means that they were lying again, which they were already lying in the first with all. Oh, he's going to go. Then he didn't go. Hopefully, he practices on Thursday. We'll know more when the pads go on then. His backup left tackle, better news here, Chuma Adoga, limited on Wednesday, which normally means you're able to play with a low ankle sprain. That's what it's been termed. Seems like he'll be okay. Adoga gets cooked at the beginning of the games and then settles in and does, does fine and makes us feel better about it. Michael Gallup missed practice on Wednesday due to illness, so in theory, he'll be able to go admittedly in a reduced role based on what we saw last week. And then the noteworthy one, J. Ron Curse did not practice with a toe issue. He did speak with the media, though, after practice, which normally is a sign of he's fine. You know, he's, it's Wednesday. You can't go Thursday. I'll be concerned then. But you don't often see an injured guy talk to the media because they're doing other things that need them. They're hiding them from the injury stuff. So I think he'll be okay. We'll know more on Thursday. Six players did not participate with rest or were limited with rest. Brandon Cooks, Stephon Gilmore, Jonathan Hankins, Marcus Lawrence, Jordan Lewis, and Zach Martin. All six guys are fine. Nothing to be worried about there. It's just a veteran rest day or rest limitation for those guys. Now, my boy Chase Sr. is the host of Eagles Now and Niners Report here at Chat Sports. So, it's time to type F Chase in the comment section. Everyone do it right now. The person who comments it the most individually will get a shout out during our live watch party. So, spam F Chase in the comment section, especially if the ad comes on YouTube right now. Let's look at what the Cowboys have done as of late. Their last five games, they had that bad loss against Arizona. They bounced back against the Patriots only to get their stuff rocked against the San Francisco 49ers. 42-10. How are they going to respond? Would they fold? They got punched in the mouth that entire game. They responded with a narrow win of the Chargers, game-winning drive by Dak Prescott, and then a dominant performance against the L.A. Chargers, 43-20. In two past games, the offense looks much, much better. More on that in a little bit. The Eagles, meanwhile, they've had some close sc uh, scares, actually, against the Commanders, who are now selling at the deadline. They snuck by the Rams, lost against the Jets, but had a very impressive win over the Miami Dolphins that could have easily been 38-17 if they hadn't knelt it down down the stretch there. Eagles generally viewed, I would say correctly, as the best team right now in the NFL. Over the last three seasons, we haven't actually seen uh, the Cowboys and Dak Prescott play Jalen Hurts and the Eagles in a normal game for a while now. Uh, it was garbage, meaningless game back in 2021. The Eagles weren't playing for anything. Dallas blew them out. Wouldn't have mattered anyway, frankly, but that Cowboys team was playing. Uh Dak and Hurts both missed the opposing games in 2022. Last time we played together was 2021, back in week three. 
2020, Hurts eventually took over, but, but Dak was hurt. So there's been some unusual stuff uh, going on of late uh, between the Cowboys and Eagles. But this is going to be a fantastic matchup. Again, both of these teams are among the, the cream of the, pro the crop in the NFC. Massive NFC East implications and, of course, seeding implications as well. And in a loaded slate of NFL games, you know this one is going to be highly, highly viewed. Today's Cowboys report is made possible by Manscaped, and they have launched the all-new Next Generation Ball Trimmer. It is the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. It is the most revolutionary ball trimmer the world has ever seen. It's a Next Generation trimmer with interchangeable blade heads for whatever shave your mind can imagine. It's the fifth generation Manscaped Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra this time. Two interchangeable, next-gen, skin-safe blade heads. The standard one for taking a little bit off the top. And a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. They also have dual LED spots to provide contrast on multiple skin tones. Three length-setting combs. And the trimmer, of course, is waterproof as well. Get 20% off and free shipping with code COWBOYS over at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with promo code COWBOYS over at manscaped.com. I can promise you, you've never seen a ball trimmer look like a spaceship. Get yours today from our folks over at Manscaped. Link will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. On now to keys to victory. Keep these offensive tweaks you've installed. If the offense from week, uh, maybe the Rams or also the Chargers game too, looks different than the previous weeks, you're right. It is. I, I, I have been plenty mean to Mike McCarthy. He has made proper adjustments here to make this offense look better. One big one we have been screaming about for years, and I think Mike watches the show, motion at the snap. Over the course of the first six games, the Cowboys ran it 33 times. It's like five and a half per game. Since then, in the Rams game, 18 alone. It's a massive change, and it led to better results. Their ground game still has worked through, but it was better. The aerial attack, the Rams had allowed like four passing TDs all year. Dak did that in one game. Keep these offensive tweaks. The things that are working, lean into them. Keep doing them against an Eagles defense that, especially over the middle, even with Kevin Byard in town, still has some issues. Who do you have winning? Like the Eagles are favorites. I get it if you want to type in them or you want to reverse jinx it, whatever. C for the Cowboys, E for the Eagles in the comments section. We'll do another preview later in the week. We'll spend some more time on the ground game uh, on that front. But your number two key to victory is to do what you've done the past two weeks and let your top 10 quarterback be the top 10 quarterback that he is. Doesn't mean it's always going to be perfect. Not going to be. But it definitely gives you the best chance of winning football games. Last two games with Dak Prescott letting it air out more than it has in the past, this year at least, 75.4%, startling figures, 576 yards, so you're almost at the 300 passing yards per game, 59 yards on the ground, now we're over 300 yards per game, six touchdowns, one interception, and another reason why you should continue to allow Dak Prescott to air it out is Dak has had immense success in the NFC East. Against these, the Cowboys with a healthy Dak Prescott starting. The Giants, 11-2. The Commanders, 9-2. The Eagles, 8 and They've given him the most trouble, to be fair, but he's been still really damn good in that area. He has been impressive overall. NFC East, 28-7 as a quarterback. Against Philadelphia alone, 67.5%, 2,757 yards, 19 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. There's 3 more touchdowns on the ground there. Let Dak deal. Really good things tend to happen. Now, we will be live, of course we will, for the Cowboys-Eagles football game. So do not miss out. We'll be live plenty early, having some fun, having a good time. Hit that sub button if you haven't already for more free Dallas Cowboys videos. Number three to keep the trees, you have to stop the run. The Eagles continue to have one of the better running teams in the NFL. It's kind of shut down a little bit more 
uh, against the commanders. Hurts, his knee has been bothering him a little bit. He might not run as much, but he still could cook the commanders secondary. Stop the run. If the Eagles run it all over you, you're going to be in for a rough time. And that's how they work. That's how they're at their best when they're able to do those RPOs, the play actions, the deep ball and play action stuff. Hurts his leg stuff. If you can limit that, you'll set your defense up for better success. Trust me, the Cowboys defense wants to be able to pin their ears back. Let's do that early. Stopping the run. Pick the score for me of the Cowboys against the Eagles. We will get to mine here in just a little bit. But pick that score for me as we discuss some of the advanced rushing stats. I wasn't lying, folks. Eagles offense EPA per play on the ground. Again, expected points added. It's advanced for stuff. Really good, complicated, but valuable information. Seventh in EPA per play. Fifth in offensive success rate. The Cowboys' defense against the run is also seventh in EPA per play. The defensive sense success rate, though, is 30th. So teams are getting some gains against the Cowboys, but they aren't the big chunk successful ones. They haven't been the huge plays. Outside of Arizona, teams have not busted a bunch of big runs against the Cowboys, but they have been able to move the ball somewhat efficiently. It's that when they throw it, Good things tend to happen for the Cowboys' defense. So don't let Philly run the ball down your throats with DeAndre Swift. Key to victory number four is also don't let Jalen Hurts and those dynamic wide receivers continue to cook. They have been awesome so far this year. The, the, the passing game has been a little bit more inconsistent. The volume results are there. Uh, the turnovers for Jalen Hurts, by the way, he's had some unfortunate bounces and bad luck. Although we were told that doesn't count last year, so I guess it doesn't count this year. Pretty good accuracy, minus the turnovers. He got 11 turnovers this year. He's fumbled it three times, eight interceptions. Does have several rushing touchdowns already because the total touchdowns include that. And that uh, the, 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 the tush push, probably shove play, is they are so good at it. And it helps that Hurts is able to get the ball to his two best playmakers, two of the one of the best wide receiver duos in the NFL. A.J. Brown, almost up, or A.J. Brown, almost up to 1,000 yards here. He's been awesome. And Devonta Smith is also really good at playing football. I suspect the Eagles will try to run crossers against Stephon Gilmore. That is an area that teams have not properly exploited yet. Eagles might be able to do so. Brown has been out of this world so far this year. If you can limit him, it will probably lead to better things for the Cowboys' defense. So pick a quarterback here. DP for Dak Prescott, JH for Jalen Hurts. Who would you rather have right now? Go vote in the comments. Final key to victory, play the underdog card. It's a very effective card, mind you. And the Cowboys are, they're on the road. It's fair to be a three-point road dog against a good football team. That's kind of no different than if you were at, at, at home. It'd be flipped. It's fine. But it's an effective card. So, Mike McCarthy, allow me to help you out here, since I suspect you might be watching the show a little bit more than maybe you have in the past. Eagles win this week. I have long said the Cowboys and Eagles will split. I hope I am wrong. I would very much like for the Cowboys to get the early win and set themselves up for more success, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the, uh, the reverse jinx to a certain extent here. Eagles win 27-26. I think it's going to be a dogfight either way. Use the underdog card, Cowboys and get the win this week.